Hey, brothers and sisters, this is Brother Rick. We'd like to welcome you again for another message um, on video. This is our second installment, a little bit different than what we're used to, but like I said last week, it looked different looking out there and preaching to an empty church. But we know it's going out to a lot of folks. And those of you that to listen to it last week, we sure do appreciate you uh, dialing it up and uh, taking a look at it. We've had a lot of comments on it. It's a way to reach people a new way. I'm glad we got this uh, today. We didn't have it. You know, you think, what we would, do, would we do? Uh, but I'm glad that God has given us this knowledge today to have this uh, kind of venue to do this with. Uh, i got a few announcements I want to start off with uh, today. Um, 
Of course, this Sunday would have been our uh, fifth Sunday. We would have our fifth Sunday uh, dinner and our communion service, but of course we won't be having a service Sunday uh, today, of course, because of this uh, uh, virus going around. And we're praying that everything get back to normal very quickly. Uh, you know, the Lord is our answer in this. Uh, God could just say it's over with and it'd be over with quickly. And, you know, and, and I'm reminded of, as I read the verse last week, Second Chronicles 7, 14, is if, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, God said, then I'll hear, heal your land. And so he is our answer. And, and the Lord knows really how to slow us down and, and cause us to uh, look up. I've heard a saying a lot of times, a lot of times, God has to get us on our back laying down before we look up. And so we pray that this will uh, uh, cause many people to turn to the Lord for answers. People are looking for answers today. And we know Jesus is our answer to every problem that we have. Um, somebody said you only got two problems. That's uh, sin and death. And you're like, well, I got more problems than that. No, you really don't. You got the problem with sin. Wages of sin is death. And then to die, to die without Christ is the greatest problem that there is. To die and go to hell without Christ. Go to a godless world. But um, pray for our church. Pray one for another. And uh, you pray for our sick. We still have a lot that are sick. And uh, pray for them. Uh, I was going to say, uh, too, uh, we had been pushing and uh, uh, for our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Now, you can still give to this. We're taking it up through April, uh, through the month of April. Uh, this is an offering that goes to our North American missions. It goes to uh, uh, Bible colleges, missionaries in North America, uh, planning of churches. And it's hard to believe that uh, many American cities don't have a Bible-believing church that they can go to. And 100% of your giving will go to support missions and missionaries in uh, North America. So if you'd like to do that, you can uh, mail that to the church. And also, if you're wondering about your offering, uh, people have been wondering about that, uh, we have a, an, a giving app on our website, which is greenbriarbaptistchurch.net. And be careful how you spell Greenbrier. It's G-R-E-E-N-B-R-I-E-R, -E 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 uh, baptistchurch.net. And you can go on there, but I, I think you have to download the app on your phone or computer to be able to give that way. And the easiest thing simply will do just to mail it to the church, and uh, Brother Keith will get it at uh, 7939 Greenbrier Road, and that would be Madison, Alabama, 35756. That is a 7939 Greenbrier Road, uh, Madison, Alabama, 35756. So if you will uh, do that, we greatly would appreciate that. And uh, so you continue to pray for our missionaries and our church. You know, after last week's message last week, uh, oh, one other thing, uh, our, our Easter egg hunt has been tentatively set, I don't know if it's gonna work, April the 18th. It was originally on the 3rd, I believe of April, but it's moved, been moved back to the 18th, so we'll have to see when we get there to see if we're still able to, to have that, so uh, keep in touch, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, kids, and we'll uh, get the word out to you, okay? After last week's message uh, that I, I preached about, behold, I come quickly, and uh, what, what I was trying to get across is that when the things Jesus was talking about uh, when these seals begin to open up in the chap Revelation, cha Revelation chapter 6, when these uh, seals, he begins to open them, and yes, it's the Lord Jesus Christ that begins to open these and allow them to come forth on the earth. Beginning of this great tribulation period the Bible talks about, uh, it covers a seven-year period, but uh, these six seals happen very, very quickly. And uh, so um, they, they happen over a few months. I mean, it's not like seven years, but it's a few months on these. And so you might, might be wondering today, uh, uh, am I saved? Am I, am I ready? Am I, am I ready if a worse was, were to come to worse? Now, we expect them to go on and live. Uh, I, I actually believe the Lord sent us here to live, amen. Uh, God said he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, and he don't want to judge. He'd rather show mercy than judge. But, uh, you know, even if, 
uh, we, uh, something happens to us, say sickness. You know, we don't know that's part of life. Accidents, that's part of life. I, I mean, my wife, my family lost a, a daughter back in 1996. She was 19 years old, uh, coming back from uh, Calhoun College, and uh, she was coming down Brands Ferry Road, and a truck turned in front of her, and it, it took her life. Last day on this earth she, she ever spent. And, of course, she's coming back with the Lord. The Bible said he'd bring the saints with him. But uh, she didn't intend to, to be gone that day. Uh, so accidents and, and sickness and things are part of life. And so that's another reason to be uh, ready. Uh, so you may wonder, am I, am I ready? Am I, am I really ready to meet the Lord? And th the Bible is, uh, is uh, really a book of invitations that, that inviting us to come. Uh, you know, Jesus says, come unto me, all your heavy labor, and, and uh, I'll give you rest. In uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, and in the, almost the last verse in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it said, the spirit and the bride say, come. <laughs> come unto me, Isaiah 1, 18. Come unto me, all you labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest, Jesus said in uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight, And in Isaiah 1, 18, it says, come. Let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. So the Bible is a book of invitation. The Lord wants you to know him, and he wants you to know that you're saved. And I've got a few verses here I'm going to share with you today. Uh, so we, we do know we're in a difficult, strange time, and so uh, God knew it was coming. But, you know, trials are made for the child of God to go through. Uh, it's an old saying that says sometimes you see things better in the dark than you do the light. Uh, and that's kind of what we're going through right now. Uh, so uh, we do know that God judges countries. Uh, we, we've had some national sins that we need to repent of, uh, such as abortion and a lot of sexual sins going on. And those are the two sins God is, is going to be most hard on. Those that shed innocent blood. And he said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And so he, he does, uh, has shown, uh, uh, he judged his people because he loved them. And he didn't want to continue, them continue down this road that, that brought destruction. So he would, he would kind of correct them and bring them back. And maybe that's what we're seeing today with the United States because any nation that has known the Lord and turned from him. He said, woe unto the nations that forget the Lord thy God. Woe unto them. They shall be turned into hell. And, and so we, we as a nation need to come back. So my prayer is that we will, we will come back to our senses and turn from our sins and turn to Christ and let him indwell us with his spirit and change us. That's the only thing that can change anybody is the spirit of God. So uh, our forefathers went through a lot. Uh, I remember my dad talking about um, them going through the depression. It was hard times, hard times. They didn't have a whole lot. And my mother grew up on the state farm over here, Experiment Station on Morseful Road, and I think there was 10 of them, nine or, nine or 10. It's a big family. Uh, but she said, you know, we never went hungry. We always had plenty to eat. But my dad, them, they had some hard times. They grew up in a hard period of time, and they told us stories about that. But so they, they know hard times. And so they've been through a lot. And, you know, there's nothing we can't go through and come out of, amen, if, uh, you know, the Lord is with us. We can do that. So today I want to ask you, uh, are, are you in the faith? Do you really know that you've been saved and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? The Bible said, whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life was cast into the lake of fire. That is a terrifying prospect when Jesus says, depart from me. Uh, for I never knew you. That is a terrifying thing, and I don't want to be in that number. So I, I want to, us to examine ourselves today. Two times in the Bible, talks, Paul talks about uh, examining ourselves. Uh, one of them is when we take communion, uh, is, uh, you know, examine yourself. When we take the Lord's Supper, examine yourself. Look within and, and see where you stand with the Lord. And the other one is, is in... Uh, I think uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, where he says, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. So there's some, some things that the scripture gives us that we can examine ourselves to see whether we be in the faith, we truly belong to the Lord or, or not. So we do know that the Bible said in Romans chapter 10, 
he says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, God wrote that plain enough for a, a, a country boy like me, grew up on County Line Road over here, I can understand that. Uh, he's talking about righteousness and the heart believeth unto righteousness and all that. I have a little trouble getting my head around that. But when he said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, I can do that. I can understand that. Uh, so, but some will not, maybe because they never thought they needed saving. They didn't think they needed help. And what calling out on the Lord means is actually calling for help. He said, if you call, call on the Lord. Whoever calls will get help. Maybe, maybe they sat under preaching that made them feel good and they never felt any conviction that they needed a Savior like Jesus. Maybe, maybe that's what it was. Uh, today's preaching, by and large, is more motivational than convicting. And see, the Bible said he would convict, the Holy Ghost would convict, convict us of three things in John. He said he would convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. Uh, of sin, Jesus said, because they believe not on me. What this, our sin, our great sin, with all of our many sin, our great sin is unbelief. That's what will keep you out of heaven. Unbelief. He said, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because... The Bible says you must have righteousness to enter into the kingdom of heaven. We don't have any. He said our righteousness are filthy rags. That's all they are before God. We don't have any righteousness to offer him, even with all our good works and deeds. Uh, so we can't count them. And, uh, so, and the other thing is judgment. Judgment to come. See, that's what the Holy Ghost does when we hear the preached word of God. He convicts our heart of our need for Jesus, our need for righteousness, and our need to escape from judgment. So and he, he funnels us to the Lord Jesus Christ as our answer. But, but maybe they've been listening to more motivational preaching rather than convicting preaching. Maybe they confessed Jesus as about as far as they went. Maybe somebody slapped them on the back and said, you're okay, but they never had a deep conviction of sin in them and turning from them and turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe that's what it was. Have, have you ever felt these things? Have you ever felt that, that you needed to be saved? That's a good start right there. It's a good start. And if you don't know these things, Satan can make you very miserable. <laughs> if you, know, you don't know you're saved, maybe you've called on the name of the Lord and, and uh, you believe that he died for you, was buried, rose the third day, coming again, virgin born, and believe all the fundamentals. And maybe, maybe you just got caught up in emotion and you, you depended on your emotions rather than, than, than the Word of God. I mean, see, faith is not believing in your emotion because they can change this afternoon. They can change in an hour. And, 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 and it, it, you just can't count on them. You have to, uh, faith is just believing what God says. And when he says, whoever call on the name of the Lord will be saved, I believe that. So you've got to believe that. And, um, but he can make your life miserable even if you're saved. And also make you unfruitful because you don't feel like you're worthy of doing anything for the Lord. So I ask you today, ask the Holy Spirit to give you assurance. Uh, talk to him. He'd love to talk with you. Uh, and he'll do that. I had to do that once. And he gave me great assurance. Um, so what are you depending on to get you into heaven? John writes in the book of 1 John that we may know. We have eternal life. People say, well, you can't know. Yes, you can. The Bible says you can know. He gives us some, some things that we can know that we have eternal life. He, in 1 John 5, 10 through 13, he says, He that believeth on the Son of God <coughs> hath a witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believed not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God had given unto us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath not hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Do you have Jesus? If you got him, you have life. If you don't, you don't have it. These things have I written. Listen to these. These things have I written that you may believe on the name of the Son of God, <coughs> that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the only begotten name of the Son of God. Now, 
we come to church lots of times and we sit amongst our people and some of the things I'm going to share with you has a lot to do with our brethren, how we treat our brothers, our brothers and sisters in Christ, our brethren. Somebody said, I believe in church attendance, and I do. The Bible tells us, uh, don't forsake this assembling of ourselves together. <laughs> We're not forsaking it because we want to right now, because we're having to. Uh, but uh, I believe in church attendance. I believe that every born-again Christian ought to be in the Lord's house. You need somebody, Adrian Rogers said you need three things. You need a home home, uh, a church home, a heavenly home. Amen. You need all three of those. Get you a church home where you can grow. But he said, I believe in church attendance, but if your relationship with the Lord and others is suffering, then you need to stay at home and get on your face before God and get things right with Him and others. Amen. And that would be a good thing to do. We come together not have any animosity toward one another. That's what stops revival. It really does. <coughs> so, <coughs> i got a bug in my throat. <coughs> so, let's take a test right quick. And like I said a while ago, in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. It says we are to examine ourselves when we take the Lord's Supper. He tells us twice to examine ourselves. One of them when we take the Lord's Supper, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Yeah, we're not just to take it because we do it, but it's a solemn occasion. Jesus said, you do show the Lord's death until I come. And so it, it is a, a, a time of reflection, a time of looking back. Jesus said, do it in remembrance of me. Uh, examine yourself. He said, do it till I come. So we do past, present, and future when we uh, partake of the Lord's uh, Supper. So let a man examine. And the second time, he says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Now he's talking to these Corinthians, uh, uh, a, a weak, uh, kind of an immature body of believers there that he's trying to guide them about. And uh, he says, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. Test your own selves. What the word prove mean? Know ye not, uh, know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. So he's saying, there's some signs we can look for to see if Jesus dwells in this, in us. Now, all the answers are yes. I'm going to give you the answers to all of them before we start. All the, all the, all the answers are yes. So let's, let's look right quick at an inward look. Number one, do I have faith? Do I have faith? You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. We hear the Word of God, and listen, faith comes. I believe God gives it. It comes. He opens our eyes. He, even God gives us faith to see where we're at, our lost condition. Listen what he said. Do I have faith? Do I have faith God will take care of me? I was thinking about this. In the day we live today, we're worried about tomorrow, worried about our paycheck, we're worried about food, worried about all these things. Listen to what Jesus said, Matthew chapter 6. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, that means it'll be scorched, it'll be gone, it'll be cut down. Shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or... With what shall we be clothed? So do I have faith that he'll take care of me? And do I have faith that he will save me? So first of all, do I have faith? Do I, do I have faith in Jesus and him only? Number two, do I really believe that Jesus, uh, do I believe that Jesus is really the son of God and he's the only one that can save me? Now these are inward qualities that we have inwardly. Matthew 16, 13 says, And Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi. He asked his disciples, saying, Now, I think Jesus already knew the answer to this. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. And others, Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But who do you say that I am? See, it comes down to a personal thing. Not what people say, but what do you say? And Simon Peter spoke up and answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father 
which is in heaven. See, true faith is a heaven-born faith. Amen. It's true. It's true. It's a faith that cannot fail. Now, if our, our faith can fail down here, what would keep it from failing in heaven? How would we, we be secure for eternity up there if it failed here? Jesus cannot fail when he saves you. And so, do I believe that Jesus really is the Son of God, and he's the only one, the only one that can save me? Number three, I think, have there been a change in my life since I came to Jesus? Listen to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He said, old things have passed away. You're, you're not the same person you used to be. You don't have the same attitude you used to have. You don't run with the same friends you used to run around with. You don't covet the same sins that you used to have. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. That's what Jesus does to you. You get a new mind. Your thinking begins to change. You actually, you begin to get in your right mind now. When you're right with God, you're in your right mind. Amen. Not like the demoniac. It was... Uh, wasn't in his right mind. He was full of demons. But when Jesus got through with him, the Bible said he was sitting there clothed and in his right mind. Amen. It's the only way we can be in our right mind with Jesus. Uh, do I have fruit? Do I have fruit? Do I produce fruit in my life? To, uh, is it the fruit that, that, that God wants me to have? It's the inner witness of the Holy Ghost. Now, these are inner qualities now. Listen to what he says in... Uh, uh, Romans 8, 16, it, the, the word there is uh, lots of times Jesus would say, Father. You know what word he used? The word is Abba. A-B-B-A, -B -B -A, that's Abba. And you know what that word means? It just means daddy. In, our, in a southern slang, it means daddy. <laughs> We're not, we don't go and say exalted father, you know, like he's some distant something somewhere. But we can come that, that, that close fellowship and say Abba Father Abba Daddy and so we go before him like and that's what Jesus did uh, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God he talks to us he lets us know he gives us assurance Galatians 5 22 and there's some more of these inner qualities but the fruit of the spirit the fruit the fruit singular is love joy and peace long suffering Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, that means self-control. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Now, there's a girl who um, uh, got on to me kind of the other day about uh, why we don't speak in tongues. Uh, because she said that's the evidence of being filled with the, with the Spirit. And I said, well, there's a difference in gifts and spirit. And, that, and, and fruit. There's a difference in, in, in gifts and fruit. And so I think God is uh, more interested in the fruit than he are, is the gifts. Because what happens to gifts sometimes, they puff us up. Instead of the fruits build us up. And they build others up. And so these come out. They emanate from inside. And uh, uh, so that's, the evidence is not speaking in tongues. The evidence is a changed life. As we read scriptures before, old things are passed away. All things become new. You're different, amen? And people know you're different. You don't have to go around and be shouting hallelujahs all the time and amen to, for people to know you're right. It's how you treat people, amen? It's how you live your life. That's what they go by. And that's what the Lord goes by. Do I know I have been forgiven? Do I know that? Do I know that God has forgiven me of all my immorality, all my sin, because I've called on him? John says in John 1, 2, 12, he said, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. And not anything you've done is for Jesus' name's sake. Amen. Your sins are forgiven you because of his name's sake. I know I've been forgiven because Jesus walked that long trail for me and drunk that cup down to the dregs of the, the bottom of it. All of my rotten sin, he paid for it and he washed it away with his precious blood. 1 John 5, 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. There you go. That believe on the name gives us the right to become sons of God just because we believe on the name of the Son of God. 
that you may know you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. I read that verse a while ago. Now, the other one, am I fervent? Am I on fire for the Lord? Do I, do I have fervency for the Lord? Do I, do, do I have a, a servant spirit for the Lord? Do I enjoy spiritual fellowship with the Father and the Son and, and the Holy Ghost and other believers? Do I really enjoy that? Do I like getting in the presence of God and speaking to Him, look forward to prayer, Bible reading for Him to speak to me, uh, get in the fellowship with other brothers and sisters and build them up? Do I have that? Am I fervent on fire? We know that we have passed from death unto life, 1 John 3, 14. We know we have passed. A lot of we knows in the 1 John. We know. We know. We have. He's given us assurance. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. That's how you, one way you know that you've passed from death to life. He that loves not his brother abides in death. And he goes on to say, we know that no murderer has eternal life in him. With that kind of a spirit, Jesus says, matter of fact, he umps it up a little bit. He says, if you hate your brother, you're as guilty as a murderer. So we've got to be very careful. 1 John 5, 1 says, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. You believe he's the Christ like Peter did? I believe you're the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So that's that heaven-born faith again. And everyone that loves him, that begot loves him also, that is begotten of him. That's a tongue twister, amen. <laughs> it just simply means that
Will be 